A departed AEW star became too expensive to re-sign. We've got Rhea Ripley return plans and scrap CM Punk plans have been revealed, so stay tuned. We are back because there's so much to talk about. Sorry for startling you there, Andrew. A um, little bit more from the uh, post-pay-per-view presser. Tony Khan talking following Wrestle Dream. Great show if you've not seen it yet. Um, about Jade Cargill um, and basically the reason that they weren't able to re-sign her. And it all comes down to money. What did Tony Khan say? Tony Khan said, I knew Jade's contract had been ticking down and we were talking about a new contract and I was very interested in Jade coming back and we were having a negotiation. I made a very big offer and I thought it was a very fair offer. I think she was considering it and then she asked for a bigger offer and then I went up again and I kind of thought that was going to do it. Then it didn't, which I was surprised because, to be honest, I came up to a number that was higher than her original ask. I don't know what I would have done to, uh, to do at that point. I was a little surprised. I did really hope that Jade would be back. I think I tried to handle it when we were going down to the nitty gritty and we were down to the final couple of weeks and we still hadn't agreed on something. Then it was at the point where I said, if you aren't going to stay, I'm going to give you the best possible exit. Isn't that nice? That and is did. Really it was nice. a really, really nice send off for her. Yeah, with Chris Statlander, she mm -hmm. came back and challenged her for the TBS championship. Obviously Chris beat uh, Jade for that belt. So for her to come back and challenge for it again and then they had the little moment in the ring I thought that was a really nice send off for yeah her. it was good I appreciate Tony's honesty with this like yeah. sometimes with these press conferences from, from both companies um you get a little bit of spin, but he's just yeah. been totally open, totally honest, but also bigged up Jade in the process. Like, well, yeah, yeah. He's and, Oh, sorry. I was going to say, he says here as well, he followed on to say that he enjoyed working with her as well, and yeah. she's always welcome back to AEW. So obviously, I think everything ended on amicable terms, and, and he has nothing but the nicest things to say about her, you know? If he, if he says that now, like, she's always welcome back. Mm. If, he, if he can't afford her in 2023 <laughs> after <laughs> WWE, because they're making a massive deal about That's it, a great shout. They really are, it, yeah. Isn't it? mad though that he surpassed her original asking price and she still said no like it, it, the I, i'd be really interested to hear more about these contract negotiations not yeah. that we ever will i'd love to know what wwe have thrown at her because it's got to be a pretty penny and it they're already a making a big penny. deal yeah for massive sure. deal of her um hopefully she makes a very significant impact in the women's division speaking of the women's division we got Rhea Ripley return plans uh, during a Q&A session uh, Sean Ross Sapp noted that Ripley is due to come back sooner rather than later um, he said I think she's supposed to be back either maybe next week which is now this week or the pay-per-view weekend um, obviously Fastlane taking place this Saturday uh, you got are you excited about the Rhea Ripley Nia Jax feud? Ah uh, not really to be honest I'm no. not gonna lie uh, the, the, the Nia Jax stuff doesn't really do it for me too no. much uh, I wonder where they will go if it helps elevate someone as in, you know we've seen recently sort of Zoe Stark facing up to Nia Jax as well. If it puts someone over, like one of the newer stars, like Zoe Stark in some way, I would really, really like to see that happen rather than Nia just go to just decimate everybody. I, I feel like a proper hypocrite okay. with all this, right? Because yeah. for so long, been saying, hey, it was uh, it'd be nice if Rhea Ripley had some legitimate competition because she's uh, so far above everybody else. Yeah. Not Nia. <laughs> no, I, mean? I, I do know what you mean, you though. I mean? We've got what we asked for, and it's not good enough because no. it's Nia Jax, and I feel a bit of a... I, I, I don't think I'm being too unfair. Uh, we, uh, like, And you know what? If Nia comes back, she she's built up, which she already has been. She's yeah. a big, big deal. Um, and then Rhea like destroys her then great then who can done. yeah who can destroy but then what does Rhea Nia then? do after uh, after that yeah, I, I'm not I, too I, sure. I feel like Nia Jax is a short term fix to a potential long term problem mm. that they got with Rhea because she is leaps and bounds uh, above everybody else yeah that's so, a very good point, actually. I didn't really think of it like that. And all of the other people that are close to her level, like a lot of many of them she's feuded with before. You know, yeah. Charlotte Flair's of the world and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Mm. Hopefully we'll see Rhea very, very soon. She's missed massively. It's only been a few weeks. It's been, it's been a few weeks. Time at all. She's yeah. one of my favourite things on TV. Well, I mean, you, you can tell 
you can feel her absence when she's not there for sure. Yeah. I, I feel like, I mean, even in storyline with the Judgment Day stuff, they're always talking about, oh, when Mammy comes back, she'll have words to say about this, that, and the other. She's obviously a, a huge deal, and, and WWE yeah, yeah. treat her that way too. So she's missed, and hopefully she is back this week. Absolutely. She was uh, she was just off. She had some time booked yeah, off, right? some scheduled time off, I think. Good and, for and her. And that was it. Yeah, Put good your for feet her. up. You deserve it. Your lovely feet. Um, <laughs> I don't even like feet. Uh, feet are fine, but just feet. Speaking of feet, <laughs> AEW may be running a pay-per-view in December. Segway. Um, it's looking like it might be uh, Friday, December 29th. Um, under consideration at the moment. Uh, so did Friday pay-per-view or Saturday pay-per-view, December 30th. Um, so those are the two ones that are being discussed right now. Mm-hmm. I've thrown myself off with this feet stuff. Um, so <laughs> it could fi- either be, it could either be <laughs> perhaps a Ring of Honor show or an yes. AEW show. However, final battle often takes place in December. Yeah. Uh, therefore, it looks like it, it could be leaning more towards an AEW show. Yeah. So Five Will Select, yeah, reporting that it's still being discussed. There's been lots of reports recently about AEW moving to a monthly pay per view schedule. Um, I think it's, it, it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? There's good things about that and there's bad things about that. Because sometimes I always feel with AEW uh, that you have to wait a little bit too long for a few to blow off. And you yeah. can do it on weekly TV and they have enough TV specials that mm-hmm. it's, it's fine and everything. But I do still like the fact that when an AEW pay-per-view comes around, it feels special because you've had to wait for it. They're yes. only quarterly-ish. I, 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 agree. I absolutely agree because it feels like some of the stories get enough time to sort of build naturally to this big blow-off point rather than having to speed things up yeah. to get to... So like a monthly pay-per-view sort of thing. Uh, saying that though, like with the sort of roster, the the size of the roster that AEW has, um, I guess a benefit of more regular pay-per-views is that you can switch it up a little bit in terms of maybe you could have certain people on one pay-per-view mm-hmm. and then certain people on another pay-per-view to like still build do, stuff monthly. What do the like proper brand kind of, split collision? Yeah, kind of I mean, something like that. You know what? I feel that sort of works now because Edge really, for me, he should be the face of collision. He should take yeah. CM Punk's place. Mm-hmm. So maybe that is a possibility. We'll keep you updated. We anyway, will. a couple more stories. Uh, it's time for the TMZ section of the news <laughs> where we talk about real life drama and relationships. Kevin Nash has commented on, you've all heard it, the rumor going around that Triple H and Stephanie McMahon have split up. Uh, he texted Paul, Triple H, and he said, you okay, everything all right? I'm here if you need anything. And he's just like, Triple H is just like, what's happening in my life? And I said, social media says you're splitting with Stephanie and you guys are getting a divorce. He responds to me, responded to Nash, F it. I wish somebody would have told me just before I got dragged to this JV football game and my girl's flipping cheerleading. Uh, so it it doesn't it doesn't appear to hold any weight. No. Uh, so that's the end of our TMZ section. We now move on to our CM Punk section, obviously. Uh, just a quick one here. Some scrapped CM Punk plans in AEW have been revealed by Fightful Select. What's the dealio, Andrew? They have said, we've reported that Brian Danielson was a late replacement for CM Punk when he got cleared the week before AEW. AEW All Out in a strap match against Ricky Starks. A strap match had long been the plan, but the opponent was in question, and obviously everything that happened with CM Punk, him being fired from AEW, Brian Danielson having to step in. Apparently the strap match, like, still quite a brutal match, was still there in place in terms of, like, it could protect him, it could protect Danielson a little bit, at least, anyway. You yeah, know? little bit of smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Um, it's weird, isn't it, when you talk about, like, <laughs> a really brutal stipulation. Mm. Actually, that's a bit easier than a normal man. <laughs> yeah. It seems really odd. What a guy, though. Eh? Yeah, what, what a guy. A guy. For Five stars. Up. Five stars. Well earned. Absolutely. He'll sleep well. <laughs> All those weeks ago. Anyway, that's <laughs> it from us. Uh, thank you very, very much for being with us today. Much appreciated. Sorry for the foot thing. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. Not that bothered. Not, not enough to re-record it. So uh, take care of yourselves. We'll be back with more news tomorrow as well as loads of great content come, out, come through the, throughout the week. Uh, fast lane, fast approaching. Yep. Vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> so stick with <laughs> us. <laughs> take care of yourself. Vroom, vroom. vroom. Yeah, like Get a, in that middle lane on yeah. the motorway, yeah? yeah fast absolutely. lane. Not the hard shoulder. No, no That's no, a good no, name no, for no. a pay-per-view. Middle lane. Forget hard justice. Hard, oh, no, hard shoulder. Hard shoulder, not middle no, lane. Roadblock's bad enough, isn't it? We're <laughs> yeah. blabbing. Right, see you Sorry. in a bit. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>